Okay, I have cut out my front on the fold, the lining and the fashion fabric, and then the back fashion fabric and the back lining. Um, and I'm using a contrast lining um, so that I can make it easier for you to see when I'm sewing it. If you want to cut it out of the same fabric, that's just fine. Um, I have my front and my back cut out and then a little square that I'll show you what we're going to do with in a minute. Now a word about the fabric. This is um, very thin fabric. Um, it's Tutti Frutti fabric that I bought at Joann's. It's a polyester cotton blend um, so it won't wrinkle which is really nice, but for these little dresses, having a very lightweight fabric is very important. Um, cotton weight fabric is okay, but it does need to be ironed and it, it the drape of it is so stiff. Um, I just prefer a lighter weight fabric. Okay, I'm gonna start with sewing the closure. This is what the center back will look like. Um, it comes down to a V and it has this little spot right here. Um, if you wanted to use ribbon to make a tie closure and do a bow right there, you could. The problem with doing a bow closure is it's a little fussy when you're trying to get the child dressed in the morning and if they are going to lay down in their car seat or in their bed to take a nap, that knot of the bow isn't very comfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little closure using, uh, this is a one and a half by two inch square um, piece of fabric right sides together and I'm going to sew it and insert it in here. Um, I'm going to use a snap but you could also use a button so let's get started. Okay I sewed around the edges using my 3 8 inch seam and now I'm going to clip off these corners. Um, I'm clipping close to my stitching but not cutting the stitching. Alright now I'm going to turn it right side out. To turn it right side out, I just start um, pushing it with like a chopstick or something like that to flip it to the right side and then I use that chopstick to work out those corners so that they're nice and sharp because you want a really good square corner. Alright, so when I have that, um, I'm going to make sure it's worked out and then I'm going to press it and top stitch it. I have put the right sides together of my fabric and my lining and I'm going to sew the shoulder seams on each one and then press them open. Okay, you can see that I have um, the shoulder seam sewn and I've pressed them open. Now before we go any further, I'm going to take the front of the bodice. Here's the front and I'm going to just use my sewing machine and sew across the bottom a 3 8 inch seam. Okay, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to see but you can see that the stitching is just right there. Now I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to fold it right on the stitching so um, the stitching is very much just right at the bottom. You don't want any of the stitching to show on the front but I'm going to fold it to the wrong side and press it up and this is for a step we'll do later. Okay, so that stitch, that step is right here. I folded it up so that the stitching just is barely to the back. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on both of the back pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to take my lining piece and my front piece and I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to line up the shoulder seams on the front and the lining and then all the way down the back and I'm going to pin them in place. Um, when you're pinning your lining on, you need to put the raw edge of this sticking out and determine how much of the little tab that you want to have. Um, I think I would like to have about an inch. Okay, so I'm going to stick it right there. I'm going to pin it into place. My pin is out of the way of where I'm going to sew and now I'm going to finish um, pinning down my lining over the top of it. Okay, and I'm going to do this and just finish pinning. Okay, now I have it all pinned together and when I sew I'm going to um, push down this little part that we folded up just on the end right here. So I'm going to end up sewing up the back with it pushed down, okay, 
around the neck. I'm going to do the same on the other side, push that down, sew down the back. Then on the underarm, I'm going to sew the underarm seam here, so I'm going to push that down, sew underarm seam there, around the arm and down the other side, pushing it down in the front also, okay? But I am not going to sew the bottom of the front or the bottom of the back, and I'll show you why. I wanted to show you, okay, you can see that I sewed the side, I sewed around the, the armhole and down the other side. Now, before I go on, I'm going to clip my, my, my curve here about every half inch. I'm just going to do a little snip in close to the stitches I stitched, but not clipping the stitch, about every half inch or so. This helps it lay flat when I turn it right side out. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other sleeve. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew up the back and around the neck. And so I wanted to show you because sewing a square neck is just a little different than something you might be used to. So we're going to start down here at the center back. And always you go and you back tack when you first start. Okay. Pull your pins out. Now I'm sewing over that little tab, so I'm just going to go back over it one time like that just so that it has a little extra stitching in it. All right. All right, so now I am going to go back up and sew around the neck. And I want you to notice I have my shoulder seams pressed open so they'll lay nice and flat. Okay, so now I'm working my way up to where the square neck is. So you're going to sew down. Okay, like so. All right, so that's going to be where if I put my needle in and pivot my fabric, I'm going to line up here. So that, that was really good. Um, you can test it like that. So keep your needle in, come around and test. And then you just finish sewing around and you do the same thing when you get to the other square part of the neck. Okay, so I think it's right there. I'm going to test it. See, it's a little bit short. So I'm going to come back and do one more stitch. And that's perfect. And finish going around. And so here's what the square neck looks like on the inside. What you're going to do is you're going to clip from the inside square. You're going to clip one little clip to really close to where you sewed, but you're not going to clip your stitches. You can do that on both sides. Okay, and now we're going to turn it right side out. To turn this right side out, you do it through the arm, arm hole, arm shoulder seam right there. So you just kind of push everything up through like that, and it seems really tight but you'll be able to get it if you take your time and just work it and work it and work it. All right, and you can always use a chopstick or something, but gently push, don't do it really hard, and then just keep working it until you get it pulled all the way through. It looks something like this when you get it turned right side out. So now take it and work your seams flat and press it. Okay, so you can see what the center back looks like. You have that little tab. You could do a little small button right there if you wanted, or just a vinyl snap or a metal snap or whatever you would choose. Okay, um, and you can see that there's going to be a reason why we have this turned up in just a minute. So the front looks like this. Okay, now we're ready to start working on the skirt front. Okay, um, don't get your front and back confused. The front is slightly larger, slightly wider than the back. We are going to add a green stripe down the center front, and let me show you how. Okay, so here is the center front on the wrong side. Here is the center front of my green stripe, and I'm gonna line the top up so that it's nice and even, and give it a little pin. And then I'm just going to give it a little pin down here. And I'm going to cut it off, leaving a little bit at the bottom, like a half an inch or so. 
something like that. Now, if you have a serger, you can serge this seam. If you don't have a serger, sew this 3 8 inch seam and then um, trim it down to a quarter inch seam and overcast the edge uh, using a zigzag. Okay, so you can see the top up here is still nice and straight. I made sure that I kept this top so it didn't go wonky one way or the other. It's nice and straight. And I still have this little bit down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half, like so. And I'm going to carefully look at the hem of it. And I'm going to cut it across so that it matches the bottom edge there. So now I have this center piece added in the center of my top. Now we're working on the center back and I finished the edge. I used my serger but you could um, zigzag the edge or however you want to finish that edge. <clears throat> we're going to put our right sides together. Now um, we're going to skip about two inches down so two inches down, I'm going to put my pin. Okay, so that's going to be there. And then I'll put another pin down here. And I'm going to sew a 5 8 inch seam down the center of the back, starting at this pin right here. So I'm going to leave the top unsewn. I'm going to start here and sew down using a 5 8 inch seam, um, back stitching at both places. Okay, you can see the center back seam and the part that I left open here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew across the top of this at a quarter inch. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I sewed across the top here at a quarter inch. I'm just wanting to make sure that that stays um, folded back nice and neat. Did it on both sides. And then where this little part is open right here, I just went back and forth across there about three times to make sure that it can't rip down um, in the seam any farther than that right there. Okay, my next step is to put my right tights together of my front and back and we're going to sew our side seams. Okay, I'm getting ready to do the underarm and we're going to use bias tape. It looks like this. You find it in the notions aisle. This is single fold bias tape and it's a half an inch wide. So. We're going to start on the right side of our little top and we're going to put the top of the bias tape up just a little bit past the top of the top. And we're going to line up our raw edge with our top. Then we're going to put it in our machine and we're going to sew right along that first fold. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, I've pushed it up a little past the top. I've lined up my raw edge I'm going to put it in my machine so that when I sew, I'm sewing right in that first fold. And I'm just going to very carefully and very slowly um, work my way around this armhole. Now, it's a very curvy piece, so just do a little bit at a time, two or three stitches, okay? And just keep working um, the piece that's underneath, push it over. Don't try to sew at a different angle. Just keep it lined up, going through your machine nice and straight. Keeping your needle down when you do all of your adjustments. Okay, and you're going to see how it's going to bunch up over here a little bit. That's okay because it's nice and flat right there. And just very slowly stitch around. Okay. See all the bunching over here? That's all right. Just keeping it nice and lined up. And then I'm going to come up and off the edge just a little tiny bit. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so now I have it sewn on and you can see I have a little extra on each side because sometimes when you turn it, you see how it goes at a little bit of an angle there and if I would have started straight it would have been a little bit short. But you can see that there's no puckers. It lays nice and flat because I took my time and um, didn't pull or stretch anything. So now what I want to do, I want to top stitch this. That sounds really odd but it's what you want to do. So I'm going to flatten it out, put it in my machine and I'm going to sew like an eighth of an inch 
on the inside right around this bias tape. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see my top stitching right there. Now, because this is such a tight little curve, I'm going to just take my time. I'm going to fold my bias tape up so that it goes right to where we just sewed and then turn it in. <clears throat> okay, so there's my, my really nice outside edge. I'm going to have a very thin little piece of the bias tape showing on the inside. So let me show you that again. Okay, I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, my my bias tape goes right to where that line of stitching is and then I'm going to turn it again and I have a really nice little finished edge and then I'm going to top stitch that down. Okay, so I've already started sewing it. I've turned it and um, got that really nice edge right there. None of the white is showing on the front, but see how it wants to pucker up? Take some time with this hand and smooth it out nice and flat and then just sew a little right on that back fold and just take your time right here it's not a speed contest and get all those little puckers out so that when you come back up and you turn it over it's going to look like that there's not going to be any puckers or gathers or anything it's just a very nice armhole opening so then i'll press that and do the other side okay so we have our armholes done and you'll need to trim up um, that bias tape like so okay so now this next part is the tricky part <laughs> it's tricky to figure out what you need to do Okay, we're ready to attach the front um, skirt to the bodice. Now, um, the way that we're going to do this is a little bit tricky. You take your your skirt bodice, your skirt wrong side, and you attach it to the right side of your lining. So here's the right side of my bodice and the right side of my lining. And I'm going to match up those seams on the side here. So I'm going to match that up exactly, matching the raw seam at the top and the side seams together. And I'm going to put a pin in it. Then I'm going to come over and do the same on the other side. Okay, before we get started, um, before we get started, fold your bodice in half and mark the center front of your bodice lining. Put a little notch in it. Then take the um, right side of your bodice and the wrong side of your skirt and match up the center of that green stripe to the center of your bodice and put a pin in it. Okay? So we have the right side of your bodice lining to the wrong side of the skirt. Okay, so we have that. Now, we had put a notch in our skirt from the pattern and we're just going to take a pin and we're going to put a pin right there. So from that notch to the underarm is nice and flat. Okay, now you can see that gives us this much on our bodice bodice and this much on our skirt. I want you to line your pins up. Okay, kind of go like this. Make a mark here with a pin and a mark here with your pin. So you're basically finding the center of the, um, the surplus in the skirt and the bodice and we're going to line them up okay and match those pins up and put one pin in okay so basically i have a little bit of a loop here and a little bit of a loop here with my fingers i'm going to just come to where the center of that is see the center it's all flattened out and i'm going to turn it towards the center pin it in place let's do it again we're just going to come in matching the tops and flip it over to the side like so. So now I have two pleats in the front of my bodice or front of my skirt. 
So let's do it again. On this side, here is the notch. I'm going to pin it. I'm going to figure out where the center is of the bodice lining and the front of the skirt. I'm going to put a pin in it right there, right there. Now I'm going to take and line these two pins up, put it in. Okay, so I have these two loops. I'm going to take this one with my fingers. I'm going to work it towards the middle. So there's where the middle is and fold that towards the green center. Okay, I'm going to do the same over here. Okay, so I'm going to work that over and then fold it towards the green center. Now if you've done this correctly, when you're done, you should have an equal amount of this green showing on each side of your pin. Okay, so there is the pleats in the front of your skirt. And like I said, if you don't want to mess with doing pleats, you can do gathers. Alright, so let's go ahead and we're going to start on this side over here and we're going to sew a 3 8 inch seam all the way across. Okay, so we have our pleats in, all right, and I took them over and I pressed them and it looks something, something like this um, when you're done. Now, I just want to avoid any confusion. Basically, the skirt is bigger than the bodice and you just mark the clips that you made on the skirt that are on your pattern pin it to your bodice. You match the center of your your green stripe to the center of the bodice and then you just divide that leftover fabric into two little pleats that you fold over towards the center. Okay. Now, do you remember way back at the beginning we folded up um, this little seam right here? There's our stitches that we did and we did that press. We should be able to take that seam and line it up exactly on that seam that we just sewed um, to attach the skirt. Okay, now I'm going to take this over to my machine. Well, first I'm going to pin it. I'm going to pin it really well all the way across the front. All right, just making sure that that barely covers the seam that we just put in. Okay, all the way across. So you can see the bodice is pinned all the way across. Now I'm going to take this over to my machine and I'm going to do like an eighth of an inch top stitch right along this folded edge right here at the bottom. Now take your time and make sure that top stitch is nice and straight and that you keep it even. So if you start at an eighth of an inch, keep it an eighth of an inch all the way across because it will look like top stitching when you're done. This is the center back. See here's the center back where we did that and this is our armhole here. I did a small little snip, just a little mark right there, a nip in the fabric in the center. I folded them together, marked the center. Now I'm going to take my yoke, my um, bodice, okay, and I marked where the center is on this one too, just on the lining, okay. Now I'm going to take the wrong side of my skirt to the right side of my lining and I'm going to line up these two seams right here exactly lined up together. I'm going to pin it in place, okay. Now I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to take this underarm seam right here. I'm going to line it up exactly with the seam on my bodice right there and pin it in place like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to match up that center where I'm, I notched on both of them and I'm going to put a pin in it. Now you can see that there's fabric there that I have to deal with and so what I'm going to do is make a pleat. I'm just going to work that down so that the ends come together and push it towards the center back. So I've got all my parts lined up and I have a nice little 
little pleat facing towards my center back. Let's do it again. So you can see there's a little bit of fabric there. I'm just going to keep working it and working it until they come together. See that little pinched up piece? And I'm going to flip it over towards the center back and pin it in place. Now if you don't want to do these little pleats, you can just gather, do a gathering stitch and gather the back to match the bodice. Okay, so now what's next? We need to sew, sew that on. Let me show you. Okay, so here is the skirt sewn onto the bodice. I'm going to flip this down where we folded it just like the front. We're going to match that seam up with the seam we just sewed, cover it up, and top stitch it in place. Okay, so here's our little top so far, and here's what the back looks like. Okay, now I'm going to take my little vinyl snaps and I'm going to add a snap so that when um, it snaps closed here at the center back, um, there it's completely closed right here. You don't want it to have a gap in it like that. So place your snaps carefully so that you have it snapped and then you have it so that it opens down just a little bit easier to get on and off that way. So take a second and place your snap. The vinyl snap looks like this. Um, you, like I said, you could do a small button if you wanted to, or you could buy one of the little snaps that you hand sew the pieces on. Um, but for today, this is what I'm going to do, and you use the awl that comes with it so that you poke a hole through it, and think about how you want your snap to be, and you just put the two pieces on, and it smashes together like that. So there's my first piece, and I want to mark where I want my second piece to be. So I want it lined up. I want the center of it right there. Okay, now the important part about the second one here is we're going to poke our hole, and this part has to go on the inside, poking up and out, so that this part can go here, so that part can go over the top. Okay, if you do it backwards, it's a real problem getting these off. Okay, so now it's it's um, in place and it would snap closed and so that part's finished. Now, um, one word of caution, if you use these vinyl snaps, do not iron them. Don't get your iron anywhere near them or touch them with your iron because they will melt. Okay, we're getting ready to do the, um, the flower for the front, and I'm going to use a covered button. You could use a regular button if you'd like to. I like this because it's a very large size, which is really nice, and then it has a shank on it, and you'll see why a shank is nice in just a minute. So to do the petals, um, we cut these little football shapes out from the pattern, and we fold our raw edges together. All right, and then we just start right here and we run a gathering stitch right along the edge of this shape. And we just go all the way to the other side. Okay, you can see I went all the way to the other side and kind of gathered it up. And then you just start on your second petal doing the exact same thing. Same, same thread, same everything. You just keep going. And you're gonna put all five petals on the same thread, doing the same thing. So I'll see you at the end. Okay, so now you can see I've gone all the way around and now I'm going to pull this up nice and tight, <clears throat> making that hole in the center as small as I can. And then I'm going to attach one end to the other and tie it off. So, all right, keeping it nice and tight. And, and tying it off, and tying it off. Okay, so now before I cut my thread, I'm going to just take a little bit of each of the petals and just pull them together, kind of just working it in so that that center part gets smaller and smaller. All right, see how that one little piece is wanting to stick up right there? I'm just gonna grab it 
making sure that that center is nice and tight and then when I have it just how I want it I will tie off the thread okay so um, now I'm going to position the flower how I want it and I'm going to sew it through the bodice onto the dress Okay, I've tacked it on. You can see back here, I kept it up in the bodice area where I did most of my tacking. Okay, now you're going to sew on this button, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you sew on your button very securely. And so I'm going to start on the top. I've got double thread. I'm going to go through the shank of the button and then down through here. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'm going to come back up and through that shank again, and I'm going to do this five or six times to be sure that it's really secure. Okay, so here is the flower attached, and the last thing I did is I did just a really small turned up hem, as small as you can put into the bottom, and then I gave everything a little press. So here's the front. And here's the back um, with our little back closure. So anyway, um, I have another video on how to do the little bloomer. Um, so until next time, this is Cindy from Vintage to New.